So right, so we so we've we've uh, we're starting to talk about things in addition to wildfires now. So we're talking about droughts. Um, you guys have hopefully gone through the drought stuff. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so those those lectures, those materials talk about some of the um, initial challenges associated with droughts in, in a disaster context and what they are, et cetera. Um, as a bit of a review from that. Remember that when we ask about, hey, what, what, what's going on with uh, our water supply in California, um, we have first and foremost the hydrology, the, the where it rains and where the rivers are and that kind of good stuff, which is obviously foundational, the most important thing. When we ask, when I, when I ask you guys or when I ask the general public, whatever, say, hey, what's going on in the context of drought? What's going on with water supply? First things people talk about rainfall or whatever, which would be the hydrology. The next most common thing people talk about is, oh, climate change is making um, uh, it wetter wets and drier dries, which is true. But I just wanted to highlight this, uh, which is that there's all kinds of other things that go on in our um, world here in California that manifest, that play into this idea of drought and play into this idea of actual water supply. So those two things are important, but there's many other things. The intensity with which our, our society uses water, um, uh, how we move water around the state, the infrastructure, the, the water pipeline system that we've, we've created over the last century. Um, and then there's different approaches to using water depending on where we are in the state, depending if we're in the, our agricultural Central Valley, if we're in uh, places like Cambria that have no state water or Santa Barbara that has very limited outside water sources, et cetera. And then just uh, not only is it lifestyle and how intensely we use stuff, but, but there's more and more people uh, here. So there's tw more than twice as many people that are living now in California than when I was born. Um, and so that, that all plays into uh, our, our water usage, our water demand, and there and eff effectively the water supply. And also recall before we start our activity today that um, the main challenge with California is most of the water falls where uh, most of the people are not. So the majority of the water is going to fall up in Northern California. Two thirds of it's going to fall in Northern California but two thirds of our human population resides in Southern California. So there's this mismatch between where, we want, where we've established a housing and cities, et cetera, and the amount of water that um, is, is normally available to those areas. And so the key thing that we're gonna talk about uh, today is this idea of variation, right? So we've talked a little bit about this in the context of fires and things, but, but I think it's most uh, conspicuous in terms of uh, rainfall, in terms of uh, uh, how I think we don't appropriately consider variation in the context of disasters and other <clears throat> related environmental phenomena. So uh, we have all kinds of variation when it comes to rainfall. We have um, year one to year two to year three to year four. We have um, the summer to the, to the winter, the fall to the spring, that kind of stuff. And we have, again, uh, our particular region, say, here in Ventura and the northern part of the Southern California Bight versus the, Centri the Big Sur Coast versus um, the Northern Sierras, et cetera. So, the, so all these things um, play into this variation in terms of how much rain uh, arrives in a place. And, and I'll just say, um, so my training, I'm a marine biologist by training. And so I'm used to measuring stuff. And when I started getting into terrestrial, when I, when I crawled up on the land uh, uh, and started working in, in grasslands and oak woodlands, I was always very envious. As a marine biologist, I was always envious of the terrestrial biologists because they had all these stations and they had all these museum records and they had all these you know, direct uh, uh, natural his, his, history observations of how the birds move and how they build their nests. Whereas underwater, we have to put a scuba tank on our back and we're there for just a few minutes and it's, it's, just, it's much more limited. And I was like, oh, great. So when I came up onto land, I was used to getting with the equivalent of climactic data, my underwater climate data from buoys that were far away. You know, like ones off of 
um, Magoo and one's off of Santa Barbara and one's off of Catalina and one's off of Long Beach and that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh man, I wish I had data for my reef right here, right? This like local conditions. And so when I went up, uh, when I went up uh, north uh, and started working on land, I said, hey you guys, so how do I know how much rainfall my grassland is getting? And they said, oh, we use this station. I'm like, okay, where's the station? And this was it, uh, on the campus of Stanford University. Uh, in San Jose. And I was like, San Jose? I'm like, what the hell? That's like miles and miles away. I'm like, yeah, that's the closest station. It's like, what are you talking about, right? Um, when I look at my weather maps, I have this, you know, this little dot over my house, or this little bubble over my house. Like, hey, so, you know, so where's that station? I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, you're, you're totally stupid, right? You're a marine biologist. You don't understand how it works. So I was like, oh, my God, I want to know about my grassland, my oak woodland. So I went and I bought um, a bunch of, so I bought, I thought I, I thought I bought three rain gauges, but I screwed up and I bought 30 rain gauges. So I got all these rain gauges, right? I'm like, okay. And I had a, a little area I was trying to figure out because I was planting oak trees and I want to know how much I had to water them, right? So I wanted to get a sense of how, is this like a super wet area? Is this like a moderate area? Whatever. And I thought the data from, you know, miles away wasn't going to be accurate enough. So I put these things out. And because I had, because I had a bunch, I was like, ah, this is crazy. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put a bunch of, you know, I guess I'll spread them out in my field. So I kind of spread them out. I'm like, I got all these other ones. So I'm like, I don't know. So I just started making a line. So I made a transect, tink, 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 tink of things. And then we got to the fall, we got the, the rain started coming, and then I would go out, and these were physical rain gauges, like little plastic ones you'd go out every day and, and, uh, and, and read how much water had accumulated over the past you know, 24 hours, 12 hours, whatever. And I was shocked. So in an area just the width of this classroom, or maybe a little bit bigger, I could get half an inch difference in terms of rainfall, and sometimes more than that. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, it, it, I mean, you know, it's, it's same field, it's the same, it's the same uh, you know, sky and everything. And there were some obvious things, like if an oak tree was over it, sometimes the oak, like the water would, be, would accumulate on the, on the leaves of the branches and it would kind of dribble down. So that was sort of understandable. But even outside of that, there was a lot of variation. And so I started talking to the <clears throat> meteorological folks. I said, it seems like there's this high amount of variation even within my little field. I said, oh yeah, yeah, totally. I was like, what? I was like, yeah, of course. I'm like, what do you mean of course? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's why we don't do that, is what they said, because it's too hard, it's too noisy. So we just prefer to have these stations, you know, or, you know, sort of evenly put out there, and then we can extrapolate, and it's just a lot easier, because the noise just gets in the way. And I was like, what? And so, and so that was my first understanding of how variable on even a very small scale, rainfall can be. So, okay. So, uh, in the lecture we talked about a few examples, but here's just a classic one, which is, in this case, this is the upper Colorado River Basin, which is one of the places that gives us water here uh, in California. So we get water from, uh, here in Ventura County, we get groundwater, we get our local water, uh, you know, rivers, local water. Uh, we get um, uh, water from, uh, uh, shunted in from the, um, uh, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, Power Metropolitan Water, which mostly comes from a couple different places, but you know, comes from Owens Valley, comes from the Sierras, Owens Valley. Um, also can come from Colo the Colorado River, uh, sucking off the Colorado River. And then we have uh, California aqueduct water. So water that is that stuff that I mentioned that two thirds of the rainfall is falling in the northern part of the state, and we pipe that down to us. So we talked about that in the lecture, but, but so we have all these sources. So here's, this, this ultimately is one of the potential sources of water for us. And unfortunately, we did most of our planning when we were in this super wet, uh, fantastically unusually wet period. And so, um, so you never hear this, right? Whenever we see the, and we'll look at an example in a second, but when we hear the weather forecaster, he or she's gonna say, ah, it's, it's normal, or it's average, or it's, it's about, you know, um, whatever, we're, we're uh, half an inch below average or something like that, rainfall, like as of, as of today or as of this part of the season, right? But this, I think, is a good illustration. I, I like this figure because it's easy to see in the back of the room and there's a big room and everything. But this is historic, right? And this is a curve fit, so this isn't every single year. This is, this is fit to the last 
few years. But what you see is we have some eras that are way above the, the and the average line is going to be this black, this black horizontal line here. So we have, some, we have some years that are way above, you know, way high, some that are way low, and virtually none, or, or it's not none, but, but very, very, very few years end up being actually the average, right? And so very, very few years actually, does, does this curvy black line actually cross this horizontal black line, which would be a quote unquote average water year, right? Or an average flow year, or average rain year, or whatever. And that's, and that's a problem, right? That's a problem because because we um, assume that that we should always or that we're mostly going to be on that black line. Okay, so then I, I had this figure, and this is just a nice, I think, a, a really nice visual illustration of this. And these are um, what we actually had, and it's it, it's broken down into different regions and stuff. It doesn't matter. But the point is, things are far away from that central tendency line, right? So so we have this. We have this simple zero, which is the average, and then these guys, and then these uh, data journalists have gone in and just sort of fit it. And so, in fact, in fact, some years back in the 1890s, right, we were actually wetter uh, than we we typically think of background. Then we hit sort of kind of close to that, sort of kind of close to that, and now we've we've started hitting this era, which is um, fairly consistently on quote unquote average, much drier than the historic average, okay? So let's take a look and see what that looks like for us. So, we're, so now we're gonna do some active stuff. Well, I'll just show you guys what we're gonna do and then and you guys can do it. So we'll break up into small groups and work on this. Okay, so, so we're fortunate in that we have a fantastic um, water management, uh, stormwater uh, management agency here in Ventura County, our county uh, public works. Uh, does some great stuff with our watershed protection district, um, and uh, one of the things they do is monitor our wa monitor falling water from the sky and water flowing across the land uh, uh, in our rivers, creeks, and drainage canals and things of that nature across the county. And they're really transparent. Not every county has this fantastic a a uh, uh, a source of information. So. Um, so first, I'll have you guys look at this when we break. First, I'll have you look at this. So this is the, the, the current conditions, right? And that's the first link I sent you guys. So um, just to sort of orient us and make sure we're all looking at the same thing, um, uh, this is going to be our station. So we have various stations around the county. Stations have both a, 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 a written name, and then they have a, a unique station identification number. Um, and so in this case, we're looking at Camarillo at the Pleasant Valley Water District. And, and this, is not our, this is not a hydrology, geology class, but suffice it to say, um, we manage water more granularly, in, or suppl water supply more granularly um, through water districts in our state. So, so in our county, which is a you know, major agricultural county, we have a, a diverse array of water districts. Some folks just have one water district or maybe two. Um, so in this case, this is Pleasant Valley Water District, and it just happens to be where we have a, a, a weather station. I should also say that, that um, this is the, the sort of gold standard. This is, you know, people paid to maintain these, check these, et cetera. We also have an array, which is, which is fantastic, I think, uh, array of citizen science data that has come online the last 10, 15 years which is individual hobbyists or, or recreational folks or interested folks put up a weather station in their backyard that's electronic, that, that's constantly logging, that pushes to the web. And so we have a lot more grand, like I mentioned before, back in the day when I went up to Stanford, I was like, well, it's the rainfall. The only like re automated reporting stuff I could find was far away. Now we have those, but they're also supplemented by a whole mix of salt and pepper of other stations. Now, some of those are high quality, some of those a bird has pooped in them, some of them there's a bunch of spider webs and they can't get it. But so, so you, you, know, you have to take it, the data with a grain of salt. But in a, on average, yes, 5%, 10%, 15% might be effed up. But when we have so many, on average, they will um, definitely help us and provide better data, better resolu resolution. Okay, but for this activity, we're just gonna do the official stations. And so that's what we're looking at here. And so here's the Camarillo one. 
And I'll, let's just, and is this big enough? You guys can all see this? Okay, so, um, and if you click that first link that I sent you, you can actually see this on your, on your browser if you're following along. Okay, so, so, this, is, so this is as of uh, a few minutes ago, and this is uh, uh, how much, rain, and I should say, normally I harsh on you guys, I'm like, scientific units, scientific units. Um, uh, some of this weather data, unfortunately, is, is default reported in inches as opposed to centimeters and stuff. So, so yeah, sorry about that, but, but this is, this is uh, how we have it. So these, these are, this is in uh, inches. Okay, so this is, uh, so it hasn't rained since yesterday at eight in the morning. Um, and then uh, 20, the, the, or sorry, it, has it rained since 8 a.m. this morning? Has it rained the 24 hours before then? Uh, in the last uh, five days, um, and then season to date. So we use water years or water seasons, which um, we define that as starting in October. So October 1 is the start of the so-called water year. Yeah, so when we say season to date, we're essentially meaning the fall, you know, winter rainy season is, wh is where we're starting that, okay? And, and I would say, uh, just so you guys know, the rule of thumb has always been that we get our first, in, in our part of California, and in much of California, we get the first little rains around Halloween time. And so because of that, whenever we, d we are doing activities, uh, construct building houses, fixing the road, whatever that might mess up soil and have soil kind of sitting around. Um, we, we have a, a g general generic default um, uh, 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 target. Sometimes it's modified, but, but the default is always October 15th. So if we're doing anything that might be impacted by rainfall in the state of California, um, whatever mitigation measures, let's say we have to put sandbags out, let's say we have to have the, the moved soil covered or whatever, the generic start date is by October 15th. So if you're a builder, if you're a, if you're a public works agency, whatever, that's your general target. Um, the, again, the water year starts October 1. October 15th is when we are supposed to be ready for any kind of rains. And then historically, it was the first rains kind of came around Halloween. And then we'd have a first sort of decent, you know, pretty big rainstorm, what we might call the first flush, which would sort of wash out uh, streets and things of that nature, usually by Thanksgiving. And then Christmas time is when we have our first, you know, ish sort of like mid, late December is when we have our, our first like really big honking rains. That's the generic assumption. Um, obviously now with climate change and, and the many years of this drought, we, we um, oftentimes miss that, that, that first rains around Halloween. But that, that, that's, how, that's how all the, the system is built around. Okay. So, uh, so the rain season today is from, is from that October time period. Again, this is in inches. So uh, Camarillo, as of uh, this morning or so, had about 11.16 inches of rain that it received. Um, and, this, and then this is uh, quote unquote normal to date. So this is that average, that long-term average, right? So this would be um, if we'd had, if we'd, if we'd been in a normal year, if we'd been in, you know, a year where we were, we were here, right, where we were, we were on the long-term average, then we would have gotten about 8.86 uh, inches of rain uh, by this point in the year. And so then you just sort of, you know, uh, look at how much more. So we're about 25% uh, more rain than we would expect on a quote-unquote average year. Um, and then how much rain have we had since last year? Okay, so, so you guys get it. So this is the summary stuff. And you can look through your, your favorite station and get that. So that's the, that's the rain season to date. Everybody with me on that? Everybody cool? Sounds neat? Okay, good. All right. So next is another, uh, another uh, link on the same website, which uh, I'm sending you to, where you can actually start to drill down to look at historic data. So you can pick any one of these stations that you want and say, hey, so again, this is obviously, this is right now, this is the current conditions. And a lot of times that's what we want to know. If we want to know how, my plant, how, how much water my crops have gotten or, or my lawn has received or whatever, like this is like where most people want to look. Um, however, we also have all this archived data 
um, uh, that is uh, nicely presented for us. And so you can pick uh, the water year, you can, you can you know, do all this kind of stuff and, and go to whatever, uh, you know, you can pick a time range, you can pick, you can pick a, um, a station, and you can get the data. And so um, I've gone to um, one of our stations that has the, the, the longest time series, which is one in Ojai. And I just did that query, and I downloaded it, and I also included that as a CSV in the, in the announcement. So uh, when I first posted, I didn't put it. So, so you, if you refresh your browser, you'll see this file in the, in the um, announcement for class. Okay, so let's have a look at it. So this, is, so this tells us what it is. So this is, um, it says where I got it from. It says, you know, when I, when I queried it, it says, you know, this is, you know, so these are, these are monthly rainfall totals, October, November, December, et cetera. And then, oops, and then far over here on the right, it's the season. So the, so the, the, over, the, the sum of all that stuff. Um, and so, uh, and this is in inches. And so this tells me the station ID. So this is station 59, Ventura County Station 59. Um, it has the, the location, all that kind of good stuff, the, the elevation, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, uh, and, so we, and then what we have right here is the water year, right? So it says we're going from October 1915 to September 1916. And we call that the water year that end. We use the ending uh, year of that range is the water year. So that's the 1916 water year, 1917, 1918, and so on and so forth. Cool? And so, and so then we have the, the season. So in, in a water year 1916, at this location, we had just under 29 inches of rain over the whole year. Um, and the next year, we had uh, 19 inches. The year after that, we had 30, et cetera. Make sense? Yes, everybody with me? Okay, so let's start to look at variations. So let's break up into groups of, let's say, three or four folks. And, uh, and so scooch around. So scooch into groups of about four folks. And I didn't count how many people are here today. So let's see, there's a four, there's a four, there's a four, there's a four, there's a four. There's a four. Uh, uh, yeah, so we might have, we might have uh, uh, one or two groups of three we can do as well. So that'll, that'll make it work. So uh, I want to know, so this first thing is over here with the season, right? So the column AA, right? Why don't you first tell me, uh, now, uh, the um, uh, 2024, I'll just note, uh, 2024 is a little bit weird, right? In that it's not, um, we haven't finished the water year yet, right? So, so we're, we're, I mean, we're kind of in the, Peak, so February is, is the month that we get the most rain. Um, late January, early February is, is the month on, typically we get the most rain. So we've gotten a lot of rain so far. For, we've got, probably gotten the majority of the rain for our water year, but it's not done yet. So I'll just note that whenever we do something, you might want to exclude 2024 because it's not a fair comparison compared to the other years. Okay. So having said that, uh, first I want to know... Um, uh, for this station, if we're a weather reporter, what would we say the average rainfall is? No. Everybody got it? Okay, so this, this, this is how I'm going to do this, right? So I'm going to come up here. So all my data is in this column. Everybody with me, right? This is the season. Let me just make it so it's obvious, right? And so I'm just going to come up here, and I'm going to say equals. Remember, that's the, that's the command for us to uh, tell Excel. Here, let me make this a little bigger. Uh, that's the command for us to tell Excel to do something, do some math, do some, do some calculations. So I'm going to say equals, and then I'm going to say A-V-E-R-A-G-E, -E, which is the, the symbol for average. And then I, I'm going to click, not the last one, because the last one isn't full year yet. And then scroll up, hold the shift key down, select that, close parentheses, boom. So I said, so this, so this guy here says equals average, and then the range over which the cells that I wanted to do the work uh, of averaging uh, is, right? And then hit return. And so uh, you should have gotten 21 point, uh, about 21.4 inches is the long-term average. Everybody with me on that one? Yeah. So this is our long-term, uh, this is our, our more than century long average, 
right? And I, and I harsh on average a lot. Of course, it, there's nothing technically wrong with doing that, right? I mean, it's a mathematical thing. It's true. It's real. It's not fake data or anything. Um, but um, because these systems, the variation is what's driving much of the ecology. The variation is what's driving most of our economy. The variation is driving most of our recreation stuff, not the average condition. So yes, there's value. Uh, there's always value in looking at the central tendency, but there's other ways of representing that, right? So, um, so we can do average. What, what, what are some other measures of central tendency that we can use? Mean, what else? Median, mode, right? So, so th th there's various ways to, to, to characterize the central tendency. We tend to use the arithmetic mean, which we just call the mean or the average, but there are other ways to do it. So for example, here, if, and I'm just putting the same thing here, if I did median instead of average, it would have said the median rainfall is eight, a little bit over 18 inches. So next, I want to know uh, how many years uh, are, are, well, yeah. So let's start seeing um, how much of a difference, uh, you know, percent, what percent above or what percent below we are the average. Uh, you could do so, but we could just do this, right? So, so, so I, could, I could copy these two numbers here, just to make it simple. I'm going to copy, put them here, and I'm going to say, um, edit, paste special. I'm going to paste them as values so they won't change. So now they're just numbers, right? Remember, here when I've clicked on this cell, because this, is, this cell here is a function, this is what Excel is actually seeing. What's actually seen is, hey, yo, dude, do this formula and then do this to these numbers and run, 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 right? When I copied and pasted it as a value, now it's just to one point. Uh, four, two, zero, two, right? It's just a simple, simple number. And it's not going to change whenever I move it around, right? You guys with me? Because watch. So if I do this, every look at me, every watch me right here. So I copy these two things here, move them off to the right, paste. This guy doesn't change because he's just a number. He's going to be paste. But because this is a relative measure, it's trying to calculate the average of these cells, right? So there's times when we, when we like to use the power of Excel to have that relational so the formula just moves as we move the data set. That's useful sometimes. And other times that's not useful. So, so I went in and I, um, and I uh, uh, made these static numbers. So I, we calculated them correctly, but now I've just saved them so they won't change. So I could just come up here, for example, put this number here, and I can say, I could say, equals this number uh, minus this. So that's going to say this is, this year, last year was 24.4 inches above the normal, or above the average, excuse me, above the average, right? So I can have it as an absolute value, which is what that is. I can also So I just copied and moved that formula right there. I copied, so when I want to have the exact formula, instead of copying the cell and putting it to the right, because that'll make everything relative, I just go in and I select inside the cell and copy the internal parts of it. Hit return, go to the new cell, put my, put my, um, put my cursor inside the cell, and then hit paste. And then that way it doesn't, it doesn't do the relative change, but I have all the formula parts. Does that make sense? Okay, so then with this part here, so this is saying, so this is the same thing, but then now I want to standardize it by the long-term average. So divide it by the total long-term average. So now this is, this is the proportion, right? Or if you guys prefer it, and then never mind. Yes, yeah, so this is this. Never mind. That, that'll probably confuse folks. Okay, so this is 114 um, percent of uh, 100 100.14 times normal, right? 
Okay, so now if I take this dude, paste it up there, there you go. So this tells me that this year was seven inches above and this was 35% normal. This one was two inches below average and it was about 9% uh, uh, below normal. Everybody with me on that? So you guys take a stab at that. So, so now, we, so now we, we, you calculated the average. So now all we're gonna do is say, hey, this number minus the average. And if it's, a, if it's bigger than the average, it'll be a positive number. If it's less than the average, it'll be a negative number. And so, so we'll get that going on. And then all this is, is then standardize it, then divide that by the average to create a, a proportional difference. Take a stab at that. So now here's my question. So here's my question. Average, right? Obviously, obviously if we take all these years and average them together, we get the average. That's, that's what we did. That's, the, that's that mathematical number. How many years, I want to know, how many years were wetter than average? How many years were drier than average? And if it was just a 50-50 a thing, we should have roughly the same number of years wetter as compared to drier, right? If it was really just this, oh yeah, we're sometimes wet, sometimes dry. So the question is gonna be, is that the case? Uh, I can come up here and I can say, <clears throat> so we used, so we used, before, we used the conditional summing function called sum if, right? So sum, right? Sum is, and I do this, oh shit, sorry, I swore, bad, bad, bad on me. Uh, sum just says, Yo, uh, add, I'm going to add up all the, the, the cells between these two things, right? We have a similar one that says count. And so, I mean, this is like super rocket science, but look, those four cells, count how many cells have numbers in them is basically what I'm telling it. And it says four. Okay, cool. But now, just like we had the analogy of sum if, I'm going to use count if. And my conditions are going to be, is it a positive number? Is it a negative number? Right? So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say equals count if. And, uh, well, okay, so, the, well, I'll just do the, the, this case with the four to start with. Right? I could say a specific number. I could say count if, count if it's number four. Right? C count if it's exactly four in that cell. And it's going to say, yeah, none of these cells equals, you know, four. Okay, cool. So then, I'm gonna, so then I want to say, hey, count if it's more than zero. Right? This, will, this, will, this, will, this won't work, but, but, but that's the idea, right? It's going to give me an error code. So it, when I, the way the formula works, it expects a number here. So if I'm going to put anything other than a number, and here I'm using the greater than or less than sign, I have to put it in quotes so that it, it, it doesn't freak out. And then it'll say, ah, two cells in that range were positive. And so if I do the same thing and just do that here, but now instead of saying greater than, I said less than, it's going to say two or less than zero. So now I can just do the count if it's above zero and pick my whole range, and then count if below zero and pick my whole range, and it's going to tell me how many of my years were, were wetter than average, how many of my years were drier than average. So ready, set, go. I got, so everybody have a look up here. So I got uh, 41 years were wetter than the average, long-term average, and 67 years were drier than the long-term average. Is that what people got? Okay, cool. So, so that's the idea here. So everybody with me on that? Okay, so the last one, the last thing we can do here, we're almost out of time, but the last one we could do is we can then take, the, take this number, so take this, um, you know, how, how much deviation from the norm, and this is what this looks like for Ojai. I haven't made the, I didn't make anything fancy or anything yet, but here you go. So zero would be, uh, in this case, this is not how many inches of rain, this is how many inches of rain different from the long-term average. 
So if the average was the real story, all these dots would be on the zero or at least be very close to the zero. Or if the zero was really useful, I would say there, there would be about the same amount above and the same amount below. But that's not what we see, right? So one, we see weight, as we just saw, we, saw almost, we see almost twice as many dots on the bottom as we do on the top. But then have a look. When it's dry, it's dry. But when we have these occasional wet years, it is crazy, crazy wet. That's going to be a flood year. We haven't talked about that category of disasters yet, but that's another category. So one is we don't have enough water. The other is, oh my gosh, we have way too much water in, in, in the... Yeah, so, for, so from, the, so from this, the second link I think I gave you, right, you can go and you can pick a, um, a link. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'm not sure if I gave you this one, but, but I, I guess I'll give you this one. This is, this is what takes you to that. This is where we can see all the different stations. Okay, everybody with me on this? So this says, here's Somis, here's Camarillo, here's Casitas Ranch, here's Casitas Dam, here's Newberry Park, here's Ventura. Moore Park, Fillmore, Wainimi, Lighthouse, etc. Here is the, the range over which we have the historic data. In some cases, we've moved the station. We no longer service the station. In other cases, we didn't have the station operating historically, but we decided now we'd like a station in this location, maybe because there's some flood risk or whatever. So note, not every single historic uh, data range is the same. This one goes from 1903 to 72. This one goes from 1902 to 92. This one goes from 1927 to 1956, etc. Ones that are currently active have the yes in this far right column. Okay, so I picked Thatcher School for this first demo because that was one of the longest ranges, 1915 continuous ranges to 1924 to 2024. Um, so uh, what I want you guys to do as a group is decide, pick a station. I want you guys to, to pick a station, and I want you to redo this, what we just did, but for, for, another, for another site in the county. So what you're going to do is you're going you're gonna, to, just like we did before, you're going to figure out the average, you're going to look at the deviation from norm, or, or, or from, from, excuse me, from the average, and then you're going to uh, tell me how many years of your data set were above average, how many years were below, and make a, a, a presentation of the deviation of rainfall. Make sense? One figure per group. So you guys don't all have to do this. 